and welcome to The Writing Forge, where we discuss tips and tricks for honing your writing. I'm Bonnie. I'm Miranda. And we're your hosts. Let's Let's get get into it. it. Hello, and welcome to The Writing Forge. I'm Miranda. I'm Bonnie. And today we will be talking about Bookstagram. But first, we're going to introduce our guest, Nina Little. Hello, Nina. Hi. How did you get to where you are today in the writing world? Oh, boy. Well, um, in a nutshell, I guess I wasn't one of those um, writing and reading sort of kids that had it from the get-go. I actually uh, struggled to learn to read as a kid and did remedial reading all through elementary school. And it was kind of a traumatic experience. Um, But once it finally clicked and the light bulb went off and I learned to read, I became a voracious reader and just went through like Nancy Drew books every weekend and all the Anne Green Green Gable series. And then uh, years later in college, kind of floundering again, trying to figure it out, didn't know what to do, and realized that while everybody else was wanting a multiple choice test. I was the only one praying for an essay. (laughs) And I figured, huh. You know, next thing I knew, I had friends asking me to help them with their Peace Corps applications, with their grad school applications. I'm like, what is, what is the, why can't you write a simple, like do your own, like what's so hard? And I realized, oh, you know, maybe writing is a talent. Maybe it's something that's challenging for others and comes relatively easy to me. So I switched over to the journalism school at CU Boulder and uh, did my internship at the Boulder Daily Camera, got my degree, and ended up being a newspaper reporter all throughout the mountains. I was uh, kind of a newspaper slash ski bum, and uh, lived in Telluride and Aspen, and was a uh, um, mainly environmental and education uh, news reporter, and then went into magazine editing, and um, then eventually went to grad school, and uh, got my elementary teaching license, and specialized in dyslexia, and ended up teaching remedial reading kids. So I kind of went full circle. And uh, and that was the best part about being a teacher before I retired to be a mom of twins was the look on my kid's face when I said, yeah, um, Miss Little used to not be able to read. I, w- I went to remedial reading and, and I had to be pulled out and it was very traumatic. And uh, it was really nice to be able to work with kids and say, hey, you know, I'm a, I'm a teacher. I have a master's degree in literacy, and I struggled to read. Um, but then I, I had my twins, and I stayed at home uh, with them and was bored out of my mind <laughs> um, and needed a writing outlet. And that's when I wrote um, my, well, my first published book. Like most writers, <laughs> yeah. I have many unpublished books that are out there just gathering dust. But my first published book is called Spirit Baby Travels uh, Through Motherhood, uh, Travels Through China on the Way to Motherhood. Gosh, I'm forgetting my uh, my own <laughs> book. Yes, Spirit Baby Travels Through China on the Long Road to Motherhood. Um, and it's about, um, it's kind of part memoir and part travelogue. And it goes through my five years of infertility struggles, our international adoption effort, um, the healing benefits of traveling during hard times, and just the many wonders of China. And um, so long story short, I published a Spirit Baby through a local Colorado, um, I guess you call it a hybrid boutique publisher called Illumify. And I actually found out about them through Northern Colorado Writers. Um, they had a writing conference that you guys advertised, and I found out about it. And they were local. I went to the conference. I found out about it. Um, and it got published. And they, they did a beautiful job. It's a, it's a nice uh, quality publication. But, you know, as you know, you do all the marketing on your own. <laughs> so that's where Bookstagram comes yeah, in. So Bookstagram has been a lifesaver for a, you know, unknown hybrid published author to get my book out there in the world. Yeah. So what... What do you know about Bookstagram, Bonnie? Me? I know very little. I'm I am a Instagram novice. I I started an Instagram. I've posted maybe like twelve things. Cause I was it's it's hard when you work with words. I, I don't know. I have a hard time wrapping my brain around what I'm supposed to take pictures of. So I'm hoping to learn some some things from you, Nina. And and yeah. and I'm I guess my main maybe my first question is like, how is Bookstagram different from just general Instagram, Instagram usage? Well, I had the same challenge. I am not a big fan of social media or putting myself out there in such a public um, way. 
um, and I was very nervous about it. So I have a, a Twitter account, which I only use for Twitter pitches. I have a Facebook account, which I think only my mother looks at. <laughs> so all other forms of social media, you know, I, I, I did them because you're supposed to as a writer. Right. But um, Instagram is the only one I've really embraced and has really taken off. And it's because I just randomly kind of stumbled into Bookstagram. So I started my Instagram account um, which is nine little books. It's the same as my website and my Twitter. I kind of kept, kept the same handle for everything, try and keep it easy. And I started out just promoting my book, Spirit Baby. But I liked Instagram because it is a visual base. And if there's one thing that I have um, access to f- with my book is photos of China. So <laughs> I was like, oh, you know, I, Twitter, I'm not so sure. TikTok, I don't even know what that is. <laughs> Facebook is very old and boring. But Instagram is like, oh, pictures of China, pictures of twi- China with inspirational Chinese proverbs or quotes from my book or stories about my travels. And it was just boom, 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 all these pictures from our travels and quotes from my book. And that kind of took off and I got some followers. And then the more I was on um, Instagram, the more I noticed this little niche of bookstagrammers where it's Instagram accounts that are just solely uh, revolve around books. And it's book reviews. It's um, delightful book stack challenges uh, that go around different themes. Like on Mondays, oh, yeah. you hashtag coffee and currently reading. And uh, on Fridays, you do foot stacks with a pile of books on top of your favorite (laughs) pair of high heels. And on Saturdays, you do shelfies with pictures of your bookshelves. And there's all these different silly little hashtags. And um, then people will do different campaigns. Um, I've seen – I know I've definitely seen – I'm not – on Bookstagram, but I've been dipping my toe in that water. And um, I've noticed that a lot of them do like reading challenges. Mm -hmm. Um, And so it'll be like, okay, they're going to read five horror novels in the month of October and stuff like that. And then they'll do a book clubby sort of review. And a lot of times the Bookstagram that I know really links into um, Bookstagram on YouTube. I didn't know. Or book talk or book stuff like that. And so I know, how do you... Because I started um, out just promoting my book and then putting in photos of China and quotes. But then I realized I got more followers when I shared the books that I was reading mm -hmm. and did more book reviews. So now I've become much more bookstagrammer and less author. Okay. And in a month, I'll do... um, Each month, I'll maybe review... Five to six books. I'll do maybe six. Do you read six, them all in that month? Oh, yeah. Nice. And I'll I do read faster. <laughs> six to seven challenges. I'll do a two or three TBR posts, which is your two, two B reds. I'll do like a shelfie post. I'll do something with my kids, like a middle grade March or a middle grade Monday post. And then I'll do two to three, oh, ba- by the way, here's my memoir. Here's okay. my book. And it'll be, oh, look at this new book review off Amazon, or here's a quote from my book, or, oh, it's memoirs in March, hashtag, I wrote a memoir. So I'll sneak my book in there every once in a while, but I've kind of changed my design from being, I'm an author, here's my book, which works for a few people, but once they've read it once, once they've seen it once, they're like, well, what else do you have to offer? Whereas going to author bookstagram... Mm. You know, there's those people who follow me. I, I mainly read and review historical fiction as well as um, memoirs, women's lit, magical realism. So now those followers expect me to review within those genres and will follow me for those reviews. And then you start to um, do people's challenges. And anytime you do somebody's hashtag challenge or charity challenge, they usually will follow you for your effort doing that. So then your followers go up Mm. and you just kind of start paying attention to the fun challenges, to the charity things, and the followers start to go up and you're still getting your book promoted in there every once in a while. And then um, it kind of becomes a balance of the two. Yeah. I wanted to go back a little bit because I, I think that's a really good just marketing uh, principle in general to 
to, to not just be all self-promotion, right? Like to have a really good mix of promoting other people and doing other things. And I like, you know, challenges and just doing a variety of things because, yeah, because, well, like you said, you know, once people buy your book, well, then they're they're done and maybe not going to look if, if that's all you're posting anymore. Right, and, right. And there's some people that say, hey, I love seeing pictures. I've read your book and I love seeing pictures of your trip to China. But those are few and far between. There's mm-hmm. a lot more people that are saying, hey, I also read historical fiction and I look for your reviews. Or, hey, I appreciated that you did a book stack challenge for MS in support of my sister who has MS. And so it, it kind of just diversifies you as a, as a human being, as a reader, as an author, and it just makes you more interesting and, and the followers just go up by that and then it's it's more fun for for me as well because it's not so much pressure to come up with mm. just author based material um but I've just kind of I've paid attention and I've observed what other people are doing and it's kind of become a little bit of an obsession a little bit of a part-time job that I don't get paid for <laughs> but it's also um helped my book so I yeah, um, how do you find how does it affect your sales Well, the first thing I did, so unfortunately, I started my Instagram account about three or four months after my book was published. So Mm -hmm. I kind of missed the boat on that early promotion of my book launch and that pre-publicity stuff. I didn't know. I was new. But once I started my Instagram account, the first thing I did was a book tour on Instagram. And I'm trying to remember, it cost a couple hundred dollars, but it's it's fairly reasonable for what I got in return. And I did it through uh, Kate Rock Book Tours. And basically, she sent out, she blasted out to all of her bookstagrammers that she works with the the title and and basic information about my book coming out. And she had, I think, originally 40 bookstagrammers that signed up for my book tour and were interested in reading about my book, whether it was kind of the infertility angle or the traveling in China angle or just memoirs in general. And so about 40 people signed up. And in the end, I think it was 38 people came through with their book reviews. So there was about a two-week period where for two weeks every day there was a new post about my book. And it was fantastic to see the different ways that people photographed my book. There was uh, one gal, I think she was in San Francisco, who married a Chinese-American man, and she photographed my book together with her red wedding shoes, which was so cute because my cover features features red baby shoes on the cover. Um, There was another gal in, uh, I think, Toronto who took my book to Chinatown, and took a picture of it in front of uh, food dragons in Chinatown. <laughs> um, so it's, it's really neat to see how people um, will create their images with my book on uh, Bookstagram. And then so that was about, um, I think, 35, 38 reviews that came from that book tour. And so that kind of gave me a solid base of reviews and then followers. And then from there, I've kept up with um, giveaways that I'll do for my followers based around uh, mainly Chinese festivals. So I do a mid-autumn giveaway. I do a Chinese New Year's giveaway. I'll do a giveaway for Mother's Day because it does deal with infertility. Um, And so that gets my uh, signed copies of my book out there into the world. And um, so so what I'm hearing, because we're we're about tips and tricks. uh, So what I'm hearing is is uh, themes are huge on Instagram. Um, and uh, events, how are the giveaways? Like, do the giveaways help or is that just mainly putting it out there or do they help generate? It's hit or miss. I would say about half of the people that have won my book in a giveaway have read and reviewed my book. And uh, for the rest, it's sitting in a to be read pile, you know, and it may or may not be read, but you know, it's it's worth a shot. And um, but the people that have read and reviewed my my book on Instagram have been um, very favorable. And then they'll use my book and book stacks and things. And I'll find out I, I got really lucky having a red mm. spine to my book because it gets used Stands in a out. lot of, mm-hmm. uh, you know, it, like. Um, OK, so color and cover design play yeah. a lot into mm-hmm. bookstagram, which makes sense because it's a visual, visual. Medi- yeah. medium. Because yeah. the themes, like they'll, um, you know, they'll do uh, book stacks for heart disease, book stacks mm. for heart cancer, where you stack red, you stack pink in October for breast cancer, you stack mm-hmm. orange for MS. Um, and I did my first charity book stack that was uh, back in January after mm. the Marshall Fire, and it mm. was stack green 
for renewal and growth, and I hashtagged it Bookstack for Colorado, and 720 people, I believe, did Bookstacks around the world, a lot of Australians, because nice. they deal with yeah, so many yeah. fires yeah. there, but a Japanese bookstagrammer, South American, French, all, all over Europe, tons of Americans, and between um, our family's donation and another bookstagrammer who was in... Uh, Broomfield and had to evacuate, but thankfully didn't lose her house. She matched. Two other bookstagrammers made donations, and all together between matching, we made about four thousand dollars for the Marshall awesome. Fund. So that's the power of what a bookstagram charity can do. Mm-hmm. But every right. month, there's people creating different hashtags for charities, um, and then there's just the different fun hashtag themings. I'm trying to think. Um, how do you find hashtags? Because I know the very typical, like, you know, hashtag bookstagram, hashtag um, authors of Instagram, writers of Instagram, right. <clears throat> readers of Instagram and things of that nature. Um, and so how do you go looking for more unique hashtags or hashtags that are trending? Do you just like I, how know, do you find those? Well, Is it a Google search? Is it a search in? In, in, in my in my um, follower base and who I follow, who were all Bookstagram accounts primarily, mm-hmm. um, I'll just start. I have um, a Word document where I just jot down hashtags that I come across, and I organize them by month okay. and by the week and by theme. So, like, I'll I'll get to a Friday and I say, okay, what to do on a Friday? Oh, Friday f- flat lay. That's when you do a flat cover of your book, or you can do a Friday foot stack, or, okay, it's Saturday. What should I do Are on Saturday? Are they always alliterative? <laughs> but sometimes it's they'll do um, spelling things out, like I just did a, um, a book stack where it was spell out your favorite genre. So for the first letter, letter of the title in a stack of mm-hmm. books, it's spelled out history nice. for nice. historical fiction. Um, there was a hashtag, uh, spell your username, which was spelling out nine little books with the first letter. Um, you do book stacks, like I said, based on color. You do book stacks that spell out things. Um, then you'll do... I'm going to need more books, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I have a lot, but it, uh, just the books that I gravitate towards, I think most of them are just flat black spine. <laughs> so I, yeah, so I'll keep a, I kind of keep a list of things that follow a day of the week. Then I follow monthly trends, which helps not only my posting, but also my reading. Mm-hmm. So January comes around, and I know, oh, okay, that's Japan in January. And then February rolls around, oh, of course, Black History Month. Then March rolls around. You've got your memoirs in March. You've got Women's History Month. You've got middle middle grade March, mm-hmm. um, June Pride Month, October. You have Victober, Victorian Gothic thrillers. So that helps me figure out my reading for the year as well as my posting under those hashtags. So, um, and it just it all just kind of cannonballs between following the day of the week hashtags and the monthly hashtags, then getting involved in the um, book stack challenges for fun and the book stacks for charities. Mm-hmm. Then, you know, a couple of times a month throwing in promotion of your book. And next thing you know, I mean, it's mm-hmm. like I've, I've got hundreds and hundreds of posts over a three year period. And I'm about to reach 3000 followers and it all just kind of happened, you know, <laughs> and and then um, the other part that's benefited me as both a, a reader and a writer, a little side benefit, as I've met other authors throughout the world where we've supported each other um, by following each other, liking each other's posts, read, doing buddy reads together. I've done buddy reads with people all over the world who I'll never meet, Um but I've also done read and review exchanges with authors. So I've gotten about maybe eight, maybe 10 more book reviews by coming across another author on Bookstagram who's a new author, reading their book, reviewing their book, and then they do the same for me. Um, I feel so, like the, the takeaway I'm getting from all this is is just the importance of community, which makes sense given that it's a social media, but because I liked, you know, your story about raising money and you couldn't have done that if you hadn't already built up a community and, and you find the hashtags by being part of the community. and Yeah, it's very much a little family now, especially with the pandemic. I mean, it was so isolating and then 
you know, uh, that and then being a stay-at-home mother and then being a writer, which is, you know, we don't know a pretty lonely, isolating career. It just, um, it keeps me engaged with the world. It keeps me reading, you know, and reading things that I probably would not have discovered on my own, new authors, new genres, trying new things. I just read a sci-fi book which I can't stand sci-fi, but I, but I did a buddy read with someone else who also is not fond of, and it was a funny thing because both of it, it was our husbands who wanted us to read this sci-fi book. And we're like, oh, which no, book was it? The Sparrow. Very mm-hmm. interesting. <laughs> we'll have to read your review. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, it was about a week ago. Um, so we did a buddy read together and kind of helped each other get through this genre that we weren't real comfortable with. And then at the end of doing this buddy read together, I said, hey, I happen to have written a memoir. Would you like a free copy? Very much. Send her a copy. So now it's off to Seattle somewhere. So, you know, every time I meet another author, I do another buddy read. I do another giveaway. I'm I'm getting my book out there. Have you made friends? Have you, (laughs) is there anyone that you keep in contact with or is it all strictly like social media? Oh, no, they're they're very much friends. It's hard. I mean, when you have, you know, almost 3000 followers, it's hard to kind of keep up with everybody, but it always kind of loops back around. You know, you'll, you'll be neat deep in conversation with somebody because you're reading the same book and then you kind of finish that and you won't hear from them for a while but then they'll post something Mm -hmm. oh I've read that book so you start talking about that book again and it always kind of circles back around it ebbs and flows Mm -hmm. with those friendships when you're dealing with so many people and it's around the world and you're not meeting face to face but it's definitely not flippant it's it's definitely you you keep them up and it's it's meaningful and you just it, it kind of ebbs and flows based on those times when you happen to connect. Mm. I, I think about them and, and keep up with them. And there's good. some really good friends and really great authors that, you know, I've um, supported them. I just read a friend's manuscript who's in South Texas and wrote a blurb for the back of her book. And then she's reading the manuscript for my next book, which I'm querying now. Nice. So there's a lot of authors helping authors. There's a lot of readers supporting readers with buddy reads, like I said, with these genres that we're not comfortable with. Mm -hmm. Um, There's a lot of helping each other with um, book stacks for charities. It's a very lovely, helpful, kind group of people that just love books and want to share their love of books and want to just connect with people around the world. That's awesome. Um, we do have to start wrapping up, but I do, uh, I did want to ask, is there anything that people should be not necessarily cautious of, but is there anything that people should avoid doing with Bookstagram and author Instagram? I guess, is there like an etiquette to it? Is there something that is, is is there something that's like, well, you know, that's a little cringy. How about we (laughs) stay away from that a little bit? You hear the stories of people that got their feelings hurt or got miffed or mm. or took something down, deleted something. It it hap- hasn't happened to me, but I'm I'm really careful. I I keep it to books. It's mm-hmm. all about books. And I very I I tend not to get real personal. I don't do pictures of myself really. Mm-hmm. I don't think it applies. Every once in a while they'll do um the uh, meet the bookstagrammer hashtag. Mm-hmm. And um, so, you know, I'll, I'll share some personal things in a, in a picture there, you know, once or twice a year, I'll do the Meet the Bookstagrammer. Every once in a while, I'll do a picture of my kids related to, um, you know, opening up their Alcrate book subscription mm. box or doing a middle grade March book review. But I, I don't do a lot of photos of family or personal. You know, if there's um, a vacation photo, I'll take a picture of reading my book. Mm. at whatever vacation, you know, camping or at the beach, those sort of things. But I I really just try and keep it to the books and I try and be polite. Um, and I just, I try to not get real um, dramatic or, you know, mm. watch what I say. And then I notice a lot of people in their book reviews will um, do a trigger at the bottom. Mm. Okay. Um, to help when they're doing like a controversial book or a book that might ruffle someone's feathers, like The Sparrow, which I just read, deals with some um, religious boundaries, which 
weren't concerning to me, but could certainly be upsetting to others. So Mm -hmm. people will say this deals with these, you know, trigger issues at the bottom. It's kind of like a a helpful way way to protect themselves based on what they're reading and reviewing Mm -hmm. and the words they're putting out into the world um, and letting others know. Uh, but for the most part, it's it's a pretty pretty happy, joyous <laughs> little place. Good, you know? good. I, I've never come into any sort of issues, but there are times when I've you know I've asked my husband about content or mm. about um, photos and things. We have a um, little free library box, mm. for example, that's in front of our house, and so I asked my husband, "Can I take a picture of the little free library box if our house is in the background?" Yeah. He's like, "Well, you know, Google Maps pretty much just you know." <laughs> Google There's Maps no privacy, really. Wait, so he did, you know, so it, he was okay with having, you know, a little tiny frame of our house in the back of our little free library box, things like that. But okay. um, I've I've never had any issues. Good. I'm glad. Well, so. I think uh, that's all of our time for today. But thank you so much for joining us. It's been a great conversation. I'm going to have to Learned check out Bookstagram a little bit more. Yeah, I hope it's been helpful. It's like I said, it's been a godsend as a as a reader. And as an author and just mm. as a human being to just um, keep me connected to the world and keep me reading and and getting more book reviews. So, yeah. Awesome. I think it's really helpful. Well, we always end on a question, which I have not thought of at me all. Neither. But I was just thinking. I guess, you know what? How about this? Um, our question for our listeners today is... Uh, do you participate in Bookstagram? And if you do, who's your favorite bookstagram er? How about we tag and share in social media? You can see in the links in our description. Awesome. Thank you. That's all the time we have for today, folks. Thanks for joining us for this episode of The Writing Forge, an NCW podcast brought to you by Nagano Press. To learn more about The Writing Forge and our parent company, Northern Colorado Writers, be sure to check out our website at northerncoloradowriters.com. Check out our social links in the description. You can subscribe to The Writing Forge wherever podcasts are aired. If you like this episode, you'd really help us out by rating and reviewing. If you're looking for more informational writing content, be sure to become an NCW member. Stay sharp, my friends.